it's finally starting to warm up a little bit. It's been a very chilly few days here. Not that I'm complaining. I had to move my palm trees in, which it's mid, late January at this point. Usually they've been in for like six weeks, so not a big deal. And I moved them out, like back out. They were in the garage. Moved them back outside before I left. Off to a great start here. Everything making tons of sense. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. Tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? You're good. I'm great at Walmart because I need the things, the gardening things. I don't know if they have the gardening things because it's January, but we will see. And um, I need totes. No, oh, right off the bat, they've got the plants. Nice looking house plants. If it sounds like this is very breathy and you can hear all my breath, it's because I hold the phone like right up to my face when I'm out in public vlogging so I don't have to talk loud. We got some decent stuff. It's not looking great, but it's an okay variety over here. Not terrible. Look at the little pep variegated Obtusifolia peperomia. This looks alright. A few little holes. Not so bad, though. Oh, hey, the Hoyas are looking good. And look at these Brazilianses. Look at these. These philodendrons. Beautiful. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I needed three, and they had three. So that barely worked out. I was thinking there'd be plants, like plant things, but it's too early. There's just paper towels and trash bags. Oh, and some seed starting stuff. Not really anything I think that's worth showing. Oh, they have these terrarium kits. There's a cactus one, and then one that says fragrant flowers on it. It looks like it's just compacted coconut core or peat discs in there so i don't know how all these would do also is it seeds it is it's seeds oh wow that's gonna require a lot of patience but price isn't so bad i yeah no, no that's don't do that some of these aren't so bad though like they have these herbs down here with little self-watering pots and lots of like oh oh that's that's gonna be interesting. I mean, it's a cute way to start a seed. Not the best way to do it, though. But I got the tiny pots are adorable, though. And then bird seed. So I guess all caught up there. I just pulled up and I noticed that my fence is bent. I, you can't see it here. Can't you see that over there? Oh, it's the fence is frozen shut. Huh. That's weird. How did that happen? Okay. That's this is not this is not exciting, I'm sorry. But how about a little bit of a hedge update to some things outside? Well that's it, just the hedge update. But it's doing well. I'm noticing that there's some foliar burn, which isn't too terribly shocking considering it got down to like single digits just about in that area for a few days. They're actually looking better. With the really cold temperatures we had over the last few days, they were very wilty, which is normal with the laurels when it gets that cold. I think I actually debated. You could see that better when I was outside, couldn't you? There's a hedge back there. I debated with the hedge, thinking I should maybe give it a little bit of water, but we've actually had a pretty hefty amount of precipitation lately, so I don't think it's necessary. The droopy leaves will happen when the ground freezes, essentially, and that's what happened. It was really cold, so the plants can't get to water, so the leaves go, ick. They hang down, and that actually, it's a protective thing. It helps protect the plant from the foliage being up and stiff and the wind blowing all the vapor out of it. When it's a little bit more loose, then it doesn't, not as much moisture can get blown out of it. So it, it's kind of a two-fold mechanism. They, they wilt down because they can't take up moisture, but... Them being wilty also somewhat helps keep the wind from blowing more moisture out of them. But uh, it's not, they're not necessarily happy that way. How's everybody liking Terrarium Tuesday? Is it going okay? I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to, like, find the right rhythm with everything. I want each different Terrarium Tuesday to have a theme as far as, like, a subject with the plants. You know, I talked about the charcoal, the pumice, and then the last one, the substrate. 
And then I think I'm actually going to talk more about Substrate because I, there's a lot, a lot more to say about it. I'm enjoying it. I mostly just enjoy making the terrariums. I'm having so much fun with it. I've wanted to do this for a couple of years, so I'm happy that it's finally happening and coming along. I don't know if I should go outside and collect some more moss or not. The ground may very well still be frozen. I'm not sure. But it's supposed to start raining and snowing again tonight for a few days. I don't think, like, there's going to be a lot of accumulation because the temperatures are still going to be, like, upper 30s. But uh, it's hard to get to the moss when it's frozen. Then you bring it inside and it just dies. Because they're like, what is this warmth? Where's Pumpkin? I've been talking for too long and there aren't many pets. Hey, Tobes. How you doing, bud? Sorry for waking you. Oh, there she is. Hey, baby girl. You look angry. I'm sorry I woke you up. Oh, those eyes. She's so pretty. Like a White Walker kitty. Oh, I did a very, very, very bad thing. I totally forgot I had these plants in here soaking and then just, like, was gone for a couple of hours. That's not great. Like, that, that, that'll kill a Talanzia. Make sure they stay kind of somewhat upside down so that the water doesn't settle in the center too much. One of those bromeliads is pretty much toast anyways. It's one of the ones I got from... A terrarium place months ago and it came out looking terrible but i've been trying to revive it see if it has any chances of, they'll probably be okay oh and speaking of terrarium tuesday i am really excited for this tuesday's video i'm not gonna ow <laughs> that was my knee on the counter i'm not gonna go into specifics not to be like a tease but because i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to execute what i'm envisioning but if i can pull it off i think it's gonna be really cool I have to wait and see. I'm excited for the experiment. I mean, if I still can't pull it off, then I'll use the footage in a vlog and just do something else for Terrarium Tuesday, but I'm looking forward to it. Also, been drying some seeds. These are from Sweet Peppers. I eat a lot of sweet peppers, so I thought I'd hold on to some seeds since the peppers seem to be doing well outside in the garage. That's actually where we should probably be. I have a lot of plant things that I need to do, and I keep banging the camera with my hand. I'm going to look into ordering a gimbal. I know I've said that before, but I'm like, I'm actually really going to do it. Oh, I almost forgot before we... What'd you do? Did you do, did you do something, B80? I think you're just submitting because you're a weirdo. Yeah, something important. Something I gotta... I, I, so exciting, I have to show you. Look at the teeny tiny itty bitty little pretzels. I've never seen those before. How cute. Not only are teeny tiny little pretzels adorable, but who doesn't love great big chunky snow? I love big chunky snow. It's the next day. I just... Everything yesterday was a little bit chaotic. A lot of things came up, but... Look at it. I love waking up to some snow, especially when there's those great big, gorgeous, beautiful flakes. I did order a gimbal, by the way, so next week we'll get to see how stable this video is. Hopefully there's a big improvement. If not, I think it's just the new camera, piece of junk, gonna get a new one. Oh, it's so pretty, even with the lights reflecting in the window back there. It makes me so happy. It's so ugly here during the winter time. And a lot of places. There aren't a lot of evergreens here. I have a lot of pines in my backyard, but I put them there. Extra nice heaven. It's a pretty snow to look at during the wintertime instead of just the brown, dead grossness. I don't think we're even supposed to get that much, so... I'm just gonna go ahead and sip my tea, uh, do my morning routine, and enjoy the nice view. A view that we don't get to have very often during wintertime. Oh. Apparently the sensor's not working. Yeah, okay, well, good to know. Or maybe it's just not sunny enough out, but I feel like that should be enough to trigger the bulb. That's neither here nor there. Oh, but, but weird transition back out in the wild. See, I completely forgot to get um, air stones. I meant to order them off of Amazon, but I forgot. Back out here getting that, and then I need some uh, airline. I need connectors, actually, which they don't seem to have here. That's probably okay, because I feel like they're more expensive at the pet store. I can get those at Lowe's. They have these for $5.49, and they just... Eh, I don't know. Looks kind of cheap. I also need check valves, which is like a piece you put in the middle of the tubing so that if power shuts off or something, water doesn't siphon back through your tubing back into your pump. This is, pretend there's a pump here and there's two, it doesn't, you, you get it, maybe, hopefully. Uh, but the whole point there is that I think those would be a lot cheaper off the internet because they're like four or five bucks a piece at the pet stores. 
Oh, oh, they're setting up for spring. Look at all these boxes. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see what's coming out this year. They have some nice looking majesty palms over here too. Some of them are kind of thick. And just your normal house plants and um, really, really girl. Okay, so I was in here and this lady who was carrying this plant was like on me. Like no spatial awareness. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go somewhere else until you go away. And then apparently she just decided to just leave her little philodendron right in the middle of the aisle. Who does that? That's so rude. Like, oh, how hard was that? I mean, that's not where this goes. They have all these out elsewhere in the store but like that's better than just right in the what the what the crap man some of these things are looking nice to look at this rabbit's foot fern it's all lush and pretty the foliage looks great that was the pot i was trying to get it on those roots look at those roots it looks good nice healthy plant and i'm finally home it, it was a beast making sure I had all the materials ready for this. So uh, I ran my errands, grabbed some more of, you know, the stuff I've been using for the mealybugs. I'm trying to stay on top of that. I did, I got another Fetonia, another Frankie. I already have one, but the, for some reason it just screamed out at me. I don't know why I have a problem. It's okay though, because they're so pretty. Like, what's wrong with having two? Nothing wrong with that. Although they... These are very easy to propagate, so I could have just taken cuttings off my other one, but I might end up using this in a Terrarium Tuesday, and I don't want to tear up my other... It doesn't matter. It's pretty. I got it. It's okay. have some other things going on over here as well, and now I'm just trying to kind of figure out the order of operations to tackle this situation now. I have, like, my materials ready to start rearranging things, but it's one of those things where I'm just like, I don't really know where to start. And I, when that happens, I think the best thing to do is just pick something up and do something with it. But I also I always like to have a plan in place, so I don't know. I don't know. Should I start over here? Do I start over there? Because I can only do these one shelf at a time because i got to move everything, and things are a little bit crowded in here. And uh, oh, one of my vandas fell down, so i got to... You get it. I'm going to figure this out and get to redoing this whole entire system, hopefully. I mean, I don't know. I'll have to play around with it. We'll see what happens. I just, I don't want anybody's expectations to be high, because I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, that was actually really difficult. I got the plants moved. I went ahead and just swapped them over to another shelf, and it was kind of fun having, like, a close look at them. I do that all the time, though peppers doing well the basils smelling absolutely amazing they're thirsty right now but that's normal we found some tiny little echeveria leaves that had started to propagate themselves so that's really cute the tiny little succulents doing their thing and that's all fine and fun but now i have this going on so i guess i didn't really explain what's going on here other than I'm rearranging the plant shelves. I've talked about this over the weeks and it just didn't really occur to me to fill back in. <laughs> but there are new people here, maybe people who didn't watch the vlog. So basically I wanna get my tropicals set up over here on this side and then have my succulents over here. It's a little bit cooler over on this end near the plastic and uh, it just makes more sense. Basically things are kind of just thrown together haphazardously and really shouldn't be that way. I would like for there to be a little bit more method behind everything so I, I have this up higher that's what was hard was lifting the shelf up that was difficult because i didn't have anywhere to set this table so i had to do it with the table still on top of there so i managed to kind of get in with my shoulder and just it, it took it took a, a long time but it's done and now i'm going to come over here and get this all cleaned up do the you know the sweep in, and then spray it down with some disinfectant because why not i'm here may as well get things nice and sanitary and start plopping the plants in place. I'm gonna put the drainage, you'll see. I'll, 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 we'll come back when I'm there. And here's where we arrive at the part where I go, uh-oh, there's a problem. <laughs> Plenty of problems. That's why I do these in vlogs instead of just being like, here's how you do this. That's, I like to go through the process of everything. I think it's a little bit more entertaining that way and uh, then things are more open to suggestions and advice if I screw something up, you know? But the whole principle here, I have these that you know I picked up at the beginning of the vlog these do not drill well <laughs> so the whole idea was that i would drill holes in the top and then i could put my plants up here water them 
The water can come down here into this chamber. There's an air stone in here that runs out the side and goes back to my big hefty air pump. That'll keep that water circulating so it doesn't get nasty and stagnant and help with the ambient humidity, the, or the relative humidity right around the plants. Uh, but like I said, this plastic, it isn't drilling very well. It's just, I mean, you can see there, it's just cracking, the whole thing's falling to pieces. So I may need to, well, I'm gonna try different drill bits. That's the first thing I'm going to try. And then uh, maybe use my heat gun to kind of soften the plastic a little bit first and just pop holes in it instead of drilling holes. I don't know, we'll come back and see. Oh, but you wanna, I have a watering can. Where, what, what am I doing? Water can go across the top up here drip on down into the inside and not run through the table into the lights below. That was another reason I wanted to do this was just really partially just a safety thing. That seems important. <laughs> I need to drill more holes. So that's happening right now. I'm gonna go take a break because that's it's, it's danger. Dangerous things are happening. I think I have this figured out. Maybe. It's not rocket science. I went ahead and switched over to using a different drill bit and I actually let these sit like about three feet away from my space heaters for a few minutes while I was right next to them just to help soften the plastic a little bit. I know that is very dangerous. Like I said, I stayed with it the entire time and I didn't have them like up against the heaters. There was some space there. It's just to, like I said, soften it up a little bit. And I did make sure to go more heavy on the holes over here because this is a garage. So the floor sloped a little bit so that if water comes in here, it can drain out into the driveway. So I'm thinking that should do the trick. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, let's just see what happens here. I'm gonna make sure I can get a heavy stream going without water pouring absolutely crazy all over the place. Looks good, and when there's plants here, it's not going to, it's not gonna be anywhere near as extreme because it's gonna be going through, the water will be going through the soil first. Yeah, looking good. Took a little while, mostly just because I had to keep recharging the battery on the drill. I think I might need a new one. It wasn't lasting very long, but okay. Now I can move the plants. I went ahead and I, as you see, I already have the smaller guys up here and now I can, I'm gonna start doing that. It's gonna like it's gonna be a bit of a puzzle. So let's we'll see what I can get done tonight and, and probably just call it quit for the vlog and I'll keep going with it later. So be right back. Good morning. Uh, I guess do I really need to say good morning when it's towards the end of the vlog? You know, I do these vlogs throughout the entire week, so it'd be like Monday, good morning, Tuesday, Wednesday. There would be a lot of good mornings. And I'm not even sure if I had said I was going to bed, but I think I did. Anyways. Here's what I've gotten done with the shelves. I got some stuff done. The top, the bottom, the plants are laid out and somewhat arranged, like roughly put where I want them to be. It's gonna take a little bit of finessing and time. Like the more I stand back and look at it, the more I kind of feel like it would actually be nicer to have the smaller tropicals down lower and just have all the succulents up high because that way it would just make it easier to water. It's gonna be hard to water them up there. And the succulents don't need to be watered as often. So I think that that would make more sense, right? Yes, no, I think so. Then that would also mean that this shelf over here, I would need to lower this down, which is fine. It's easier to lower them down and then to lift them up, lifting that table up. Getting this table up was, I already talked about it, it was a nightmare. And I did also change out the lights just on the shelf right here. Originally it just had one shop light with these El fluorescent LEDs in them. It had like just one of these guys, but only one bulb worked in it because it needs a new starter or something like that, I'm not sure. And I swapped it out with these Honeywell LEDs, which are the same ones that I have up here that were working great. You know, I had different lights on different shelves for reasons so I could kind of play around with them, see how they worked, see what the plants seemed to enjoy. And uh, since those shop lights got the basil growing and flowering and it has poblanos popping out of my peppers, I'd say that's a fairly good testament to those lights that they're good for foliar growth and for flowering. So that means that there's a good nice even spectrum they're probably a little bit more onto the uh, flowering spectrum than the vegetative spectrum but that's okay there's nothing wrong with that i can't say for sure without 
for certain. <laughs> I can't say for sure without special instruments to actually measure the wavelengths and whatnot. I don't need to do that. It's just anecdotal. I like to keep it cheap. I did have, I posted like a little clip of all this on Instagram last night and somebody asked me how I keep the foliage from scorching and well I hadn't the vlog hadn't been out yet so they don't know that this is brand new I had just done this like a few hours before I made that post so uh it could scorch the foliage I don't think it will because these are very low wattage low intensity LEDs they're cheap I don't know what the spectrum on them unfortunately I do know that they're not the same. I thought they were, but it turns out I was very wrong about that. Last year I got this one back here. They all, I know they all kind of blend together, but that shop light back there. I got it from Sam's Club, which is where I got all of these, and uh, I thought that's what I was getting with the rest of them, but I did notice that there's like a slightly, I don't know if it's going to come through on camera, but there's a slightly different color temperature coming out of the two of them. Like, you can kind of see this one's a little bit more of a crisp white, and this one's a little bit warmer right here. I don't think that's going to be an issue. In fact, I kind of like having that fusion of the two different ones together. But the thing is, the rest of them aren't like that. The rest of them are just whatever Sam's was selling this year, which is different. It's not the same. The packaging looked very similar. But this one back here, see when you pull the chain, you can dim it. That doesn't show very well, but you can turn it up three different levels of brightness, whereas these new ones they're selling just on and off. So that was the first way I knew that they were different, and then I was like, uh-oh, looked at the color temperature and saw, well, yeah, they're not quite the same. So I am going to have to keep an eye on that, because my thought of how, hey, these are working really well, turned out to be based on the fact that it was actually a fusion of two different color spectrums together, as opposed to just having the four of them. So... I don't know. We will see. It should be okay. Plus, there's a window back there. I tend to keep the blinds closed on it because it's kind of an old, drafty window and very poorly insulated. I know that it's poorly insulated because I'm the one who insulated it and I had no idea what I was doing. So, there's that. So that's why I like to kind of keep those closed. If it gets too cold, I can always put plastic around the back of these two, which might not be a bad idea for holding in humidity. Maybe I'll do that sometime. I don't know. And the other thing I really liked about these LEDs is that they all link together. You can link up to 10 of them. So, you know, this one plugs in down here and then, uh, wait, hold on. I just confused myself. So like this light right here is actually plugged into an outlet, but then it comes out through the back and comes up and plugs into this light, powering on that light. And then you can see I have that light going around plugging into that light so I only have to plug one thing in which is also very nice. I have had people ask me about my grow lights all the time. I never know what to say because I don't use like traditional grow lights. I just use whatever's closest to what seems like a full spectrum which is hard to pull off. Typically you want to be close to 6700k which I don't see with traditional just like shop light LEDs very often. That's why over here I have these LEDs where you buy the bulbs separately and these bulbs I think they were Philips they're rated at 6500k and which is great but their intensity just isn't good. They're overly diffused and the plants that were over here were doing well. They grew well but just there wasn't they didn't do much. Not much at all in comparison to these up here. So that's why I went ahead and decided to just swap over to these all the way. And these are wet rated, which is nice, but still like earlier when there's water pouring all over the tops of them, that's still something I want to stay away from and stay clear of. I would like for them to not have water pouring on them. Water and electronics just, it doesn't mix well. It's nice to be able to factor in that they're wet rated, whereas just over here, just these traditional shop lights with the 6500K LED tubes in them, they were not. But I'm still probably going to leave those two so I can kind of compare them. But unless I have the exact same plants under each setup, it's going to be hard to say which is better and which one isn't. But as I mentioned, just anecdotally, I did notice that the combo with these shop lights here that seemed to work well. You can see it's just, it's a little bit more tricky to water up here. Not the plants that are in the front. Oh, I don't need to water those ferns. I accidentally, those poor crocodile ferns, I didn't realize the pots I had them sitting in. Just regular pots to keep them from falling over. Uh, they didn't have holes in the bottom. So those poor things were absolutely drenched and stinky and they need a, a flushing and a repot. But yeah, you can see it's a little bit 
tricky, not for the stuff in the front, but in the back. It's just more tricky to get in there and like make sure that the plants are actually being watered the way they should be. But also a lot of these plants that are up here are going to be used in projects here on the channel over the next few weeks. So once those have been used, it's gonna free up a lot of space. So that's something else I kind of have to factor in there. And I did also make sure to put some regulators on these air stones that are in here because uh, they were going a little bit too strong. Like you could actually feel a breeze coming out of these holes that I put up there. That's too much, that's not necessary. But overall, everything's draining well and looking good. I think the setup's going to work wonderfully. Yeah, these air stones and the pump they're hooked to are so strong that it was like an air hockey table. It was so much air blowing out and that's too much. The entire idea here was one, won't waste as much water. This water will get put to at least some sort of use being that it's going to evaporate out those holes and there will be some airflow around the roots of the plants, which is great. And it's going to be moist air, which is even better, help increase the humidity right around the plants. But for the succulents, that's not necessary. So I'm thinking with the succulents, if I just put like a drain, I just put a hose right here, drill that in so that when there's water in these, that can just drain down into one of the ones on the bottom. That would make more sense. The succulents don't need this humid situation around them. I don't think that that would be ideal. They probably wouldn't like it very much. And you may notice the water is slightly discolored. That's because I took it out of the pond, like you just saw, and that water has some driftwood in it, so there's some tannins in the water, which is fine, even somewhat good for the plants. But I might not be a bad idea instead of using air stones there like little carbon cartridges made for fish tanks that you can hook right to an airline and it, the movement of the bubbles going out the top of it pulls the water through the carbon activated carbon activated charcoal whatever you want to call it it is there's a slight difference but i'm not going to go into all that but that would help kind of remove impurities I don't, I think that might be taking things a bit far, but it wouldn't hurt to make sure the water's extra clean, but there's always going to be some kind of debris down here. I could have put like a fine mesh screen up here. That actually might've been a good idea, but I, you, I didn't do it because I just now thought of it. So, <laughs> oops. There's actually even carbon pads, like filter pads. They're long, you cut them up, put them in your aquarium filters that I could have cut out and laid that down and set the plants on top of it. That would work. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. Maybe I'll give that a shot because I mean, it would be, it would be nice for that water to be clean, especially if it's blowing up around the plants. I don't have it hooked to any type of sterilizer or anything like that. And since I'm pulling it from the pond, that might be something I do just to be safe, help cut back on the risks of mold and fungus and bacteria and things like that. You know, moist, humid environments are really just breeding grounds for all kinds of things that we don't want on our plants, but our plants really like those moist, humid environments. So it's useful to you know, find a balance and try and keep things as clean as possible. I actually do have a UV sterilizer on the pot. You can't see the pond. That's not really going to make a difference over here though. I mean, it's going to come into here being slightly more sterile, but once it's over here and sitting without that UV running through it, then it, it doesn't matter anymore. It's irrelevant. There's still plenty to do. I just don't want to go too far into it the way things are right now until I've made up my mind as to kind of how I want to keep things arranged. And then I have like my misfits over here, some plants that need a little bit more TLC, my little Logies graveyard over there, and then just things that need to be repotted. This Maxillaria orchid has gotten very large, and I think that I would prefer to keep it in a hanging basket. I think it would work better in a basket. So that might be something I get done. I have a little fake bonsai here from Sam's Club that's actually really beautiful, but the pot that it's in is just horribly, horribly wrong for it. There's no drainage. You know, it has all that gravel and stuff glued to the top of it. So I need to repot that. And then this beautiful aglonemia. Isn't this just, it's beautiful. I mean, it's an aglonemia, but it's a very pretty one. And this was super cheap at Walmart, but there's no drainage. And it, the nursery pot is like clipped into this plastic pot. So I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit more to try and figure out how to get it out of there. I didn't try it very hard, but I was like, oh, it doesn't just lift right out. And I was like, well, that's got complicated. So I'm not gonna deal with it right now. But yeah, see, you get what I'm saying. I will finish this up and we'll talk about it in next week's vlog. This is 
a good start though. I think things are moving in the right direction. And it was nice getting to have like a better look at some of the plants. Like for example, I knew this Calathea wasn't doing well, but I just kept caring for it in the exact same way I was caring for the other one, which is right here. These two plants were sitting right next to each other, getting the same water, same everything. And uh, yeah, see, slight difference there. Don't really understand that. Maybe this one just has a better established root system. Maybe this one's soil doesn't drain quite as well or dries out too quickly. I don't really know. I haven't really thought about it that much either, to be honest. See, it's still alive, just not looking too happy. And I think that that's kind of fascinating, isn't it? When you have two plants right next to each other, same care, seemingly same everything, but I didn't pop these up, so I can't say that the soil's consistent between the two. And then, yeah, look. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, that's weird. That's really weird. Now look at all the little baby succulents I found popping up out of the bottom of this crassula. That's pretty neat. I don't know which plant they came off of. One of my sedums or echeverias, but I found lots and lots of just little succulent pieces that had fallen down and just started to propagate and grow roots all on their own. I, it's one thing I love about echeverias and sedums. They're so easy to propagate. I just had this sitting down there so it'd be easier to see. It didn't want to focus. That's not, it doesn't stay down here. That's not where this plant goes. That's what's going on over here. I still need to play around with it an awful lot more because I would ultimately like to have some space to maybe do some seed starting and some propagating. So I may just have to find a new place for the succulents altogether. There, I haven't even begun to fill this side. There are plants scattered all over my house and out here like tucked into different areas of the grow room that actually will be going over here so that's why it looks kind of bare but i kind of figured i should handle some repottings and like i said figure out the layout before i go too hardcore just stuffing the shelves full oh and just because i know people are going to ask here's the light honeywell led four foot linkable shop light so you can see they're linkable sturdy one piece all that fun stuff. The most important part is down here where it says, I'm sorry, this is so wobbly, 5,000 daylight, bright white. I would like to have these closer to the 65 point right there, but it's close. <laughs> it's getting there. Plants like to be more on this end to get the foliar growth and more down here on this end for flowering. And then uh, if you kind of stay in here and you can have some of that also, you don't have to see red light for it to exist. These bright, intense red lights, I, I can't handle them. It's too much for me. They give me headaches. I think they look terrible. They don't photograph well. <laughs> they don't make for good YouTube videos. And uh, I mean, that's like the last reason that I dislike them. I do have some from back in the day when they were new and I wanted to try them out and they combo in with the rest of the lights just fine but really daylight full spectrum lighting there's nothing wrong with it I don't buy big expensive bulbs like ever I used to when there weren't as many options you used to have to get like great big 150 watt compact fluorescents and halogens and those things but like my hibiscus see that there's a flower back there well I mean it fell off <laughs> but it's been budding it's been flowering for several weeks. It has new growth and it's like several feet from the light. And that says something right there. I mean, it's a hibiscus. The same thing with the croton that's back there. The audio gets weird because I'm holding the camera way up high above my head, but new growth and it's still, you can see it's a few feet away from these lights, but there's just enough of it. I have a lot of them. <laughs> there are a lot of these bulbs. They have a good, a strong par. That's how far the light penetrates, basically. There's a par number and par 38 is where I like to be for having a bulb that will reach really far. And then a high wattage, obviously. Can the, these LED panels that are sold where they're like 300 watts, but if you actually look and they're like seven watts, those will work okay if they are like right above your plants. And they're usually just tiny little chip LEDs, which works. Like I said, as long as it's right above the plant. But if you want something that will go far, then you need par. And these aren't even made for plants. These are just spotlights. They're just daylight spotlights. And they were crazy cheap. I got them on clearance. When they weren't on clearance, they were like $17 a bulb, which is kind of up there, but still cheaper than like conventional grow lights. Oh, and here's that bulb. These are the ones I was talking about. There's these floodlights. 
on the cool end and it says down here par 38 like i said that's actually the reflector basically that has to do with like the angle and whatnot and how well that that's going to basically project the light par 38 is good that's high intensity the intensity also has to do with the wattage and some other things but that's kind of a gist of it just a broad overlook of it and uh they're working fine technically like science wise they shouldn't be working fine because there's a lot of studies out there that suggest that if like the wavelength is between a certain range that it essentially doesn't do anything for chlorophyll those studies were mostly done with algae though and uh, it just i mean again anecdotal which is really not sciencey at all but the plants are growing and they're doing okay and i've been using those for a few years so seemingly they work well but it, like i said science wise they really shouldn't because they're only in the 5k range it says so over here somewhere just i don't know just trust me it does it's on there somewhere oh i almost forgot poblano update yeah they're doing all right doing well i mean they've kind of been in the vlog the whole time i've been talking so it didn't really occur to me to just like be like hey Look how much those poblanos have grown. But they're doing well, and it even looks like there's some new flower buds getting ready to start up top, which is exciting. The amazel basil, it's a little bit wilty and sad looking, because I let it dry out a little bit too long, but it's it'll bounce back. I am so glad that I brought that plant inside for the winter time. It just, when I was moving it, I couldn't stop sniffing it. It just smells so good. It's a nice aroma to have around. I don't hate it. And then the Persian shields over here, look at it. It's just so happy. It's doing wonderfully. It looks great, doesn't it? Well, that's a fun combo, that Alakaja Odora, the Okinawa silver in there with the with the purple and that. I think that looks, doesn't that look nice? Very, oh, oh, hello. It's a sexy shot. It's so much contrast. Okay, that's, that's enough. I've talked to the point where nothing's making sense in my brain anymore. The Orchid Show is this weekend here in St. Louis. The, this weekend. Next weekend. That's when it kicks off. Anybody going? Let me know. I'm going to try and go. Maybe we can have a meetup or something like that. I'm going to do my best to go. I'm not positive. I'm going to try. It's the weekend where the vendors are there and they sell all the orchids. And I'm trying to, like, cut back on the orchids. But it's, like, the only time of year to really get a good selection of nice plants. So I'll, I'll, I'll at least stop in. And I'll do a video of the display later. The first opening weekends, just things are very crowded and chaotic in there. Uh, but it's the display they set up is beautiful. They integrate the orchids into these absolutely just beautiful displays with all types of tropical plants and mosses. And it's just, it's stunning. And uh, I like to vlog that. And I don't know if I'll vlog it, but there'll be a video at least showing the displays. It's so pretty. Last year, they had a giant row of these big, massive pink princess philodendrons right when you walked in. They weren't part of the display. They were like, hey, welcome to the botanicals orchid show we bougie we got pink princess don't touch them there are cameras everywhere around them i think the cameras are always there maybe that's why they decided to put those there because people be stealing clippings and being thieves with things i don't like that everybody you need to stop it was a productive week got a bunch of stuff done and <laughs> i did look at I like how i can take something classy and just totally eviscerate it but i'm fine with it because it's just lots of little cute things uh next week Actually, I'm not going to say what's going on next week because I don't know for sure. And when I say here's what's happening next week, then I get like pigeonholed into doing something that maybe doesn't make sense to do. So I don't know. We'll, we'll just see what happens next week. I, I will find out together. It'll be fun. Comment down below. Say hi. Like I said, let me know if you're going to go to the orchid show. If you're not an orchid person, it's not just orchids. Like I said, there are just tropical plants galore. It's beautiful. And just going to the Missouri Botanical Gardens in itself is an absolute treat. There's a giant climatron, which is just a big glass bubble, essentially, that's basically a rainforest. And uh, that's nice for beating the winter blues. It's like going on a little mini vacation for a few hours. I absolutely love it there. They don't allow tripods and like selfie sticks and stuff like that in there. So uh, it's so hard to go in and get a good video of the botanicals without it being a little bit shaky. But I'm going to try and just sneak in a gimbal and see what happens. Also, I know someone who could probably grant me access to a lot of things, and I should probably milk that resource, but I feel weird about that, and I've never done it before. Anyways, and yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm going to go now. Comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. All my social media is down in the description. <laughs> I'm on Instagram way more than anything else. 
and uh, you know the YouTube drill like subscribe hit the notification bell that way you know new videos come out I'm going to try over the next few weeks get things kind of tidied up because I think it would be sort of fun to do a little bit of like a grow room tour to an extent something like that I bit look at what I did I did that I was coming through here and I was carrying something really big and bulky and I just oh poor bipinate if but there's a new leaf coming up back there I was gonna go. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.